The McLaren F1 from the 90s was the first all-carbon fiber supercar and weighed just 1,138 kilograms which is still lighter than most of today's supercars. It was also the fastest car in the world for a whopping 11 years and is still the fastest naturally aspirated car in the world today over 25 years after its release. This is just one example of McLaren's industry-leading genius that not only let them create interesting and very attractive supercars, but have also allowed them to become the second most successful Formula One team in history, second to Ferrari, of course. In 1998, McLaren's sneaky extra brake pedal was banned in F1 racing, mainly because it was an innovation that was too advanced for the competition to handle. It all started as a eureka moment that came to McLaren's chief engineer, Steve Nichols, while he was laying in the bath at his parents' house. Nichols was thinking about how the cars were set up to have a lot of understeer with thick front tires and thin rear tires. To counteract the understeer, Nichols thought about the possibility of using the rear brakes during corners. All they had to do was put an extra master cylinder on the car and a length of brake hose that went to the right rear caliper, so that when you pushed the normal pedal it would put both rear calipers on, and when you pressed the fiddle brake it only activated the rear. The mod modification was very basic, especially for Formula 1, and Nichols said the innovation cost just 50 quids worth of parts that we already had in the truck. So how did it work? In the footwell of Hakkinen's F1 car was three pedals, the steer brake, the normal brake pedal and the throttle. The steer brake pedal was quite stiff and the driver would have to press quite hard on it to use it. This way, Hakkinen and Coulthard wouldn't have to worry about tapping it and spinning out. The steer brake pedal operated one rear brake on one side of the car. The side of the car that it operated changed depending on the race and was decided on a track basis. The main deciding factor was long high-speed corners in which drivers would normally experience a high amount of understeer. So if McLaren were set to race on a circuit with a few tricky right-hand turns, the engine engineers would set up the cars to have the brake steer pedal to operate the rear right brake. Not only did the innovation help correct understeer, but it also improved cornering aerodynamics as the front wheels would be straighter and drivers didn't have to carry as much front wing on corner entry making the car more stable. McLaren began using their brake steer trick in the second half of 1997 and were quickly found out in early 1998. During the Austrian GP of 1998, a photographer for F1 Racing magazine, Darren Heath, noticed that he could see both McLaren drivers' rear brakes glowing mid-corner. This was very unusual to see, let alone on both cars of the same F1 team. Thanks to some great instinct and intuition, Heath had a hunch that McLaren were using some sort of extra brake, a theory that eventually proved to be bang on the money. Heath was able to luckily, with just the right exposure settings, capture a shot of the footwell of Hakkinen's car, revealing three foot pedals rather than two. As events progressed, the secret was revealed to the world, competitors tried to replicate and understand the technology, and in the end, it was banned on the basis of four-wheel steering. Obviously it was not realigning the wheels, Tim Goss, chief test team engineer at the time, commented. We called it brake steer, which was unfortunate when we tried to argue that it wasn't anything to do with steering. It was a bad choice of name from ourselves. By then, it was too late to change the name to fiddle brake, a term invented by Ross Braun, Ferrari's technical director at the time. The ingenious, race-winning 50-quid invention was already banned. Although the infinitely clever steer brake was banned in the end, it managed to serve a great purpose for a good few months and helped McLaren to win several Grand Prix.